So over to our speaker. Before um, before Yuka takes over, I just wanted to do a quick introduction. So obviously Yuka is uh, going to be talking to us today about building a marketing warehouse with Google BigQuery. So Yuka is from uh, Supermetrics. He's based in Helsinki. So it's uh, uh, around. It's an early morning for him today. I think it's around eleven o'clock today. I'd actually like to thank him because this is his second presentation for us. So he took us through something similar um, at our, our company conference um, a few months back in Chiang Mai. And it was um, a really, uh, really interesting overview of um, the, the, the tool that they have and the benefits that it brings. Um, and also um, a great demo as well. So for those of you who don't know, Supermetrics is a tool for bringing all of your marketing data um, into um, your favorite reporting, analytics, and storage programs. So they've got solutions for Google Sheets, Data Studio, Excel, uh, and BigQuery. Uh, but we're going to be talking about BigQuery today. So I think um, from personal experience, we've been using the um, uh, Supermetrics um, Google Sheets plugin for probably about five years now. Uh, four or five years and it's um, it's a great tool they build really comprehensive high quality um, tools so um, uh, the, the, the tool comes highly recommended from us so Yucca is going to take over now and what he's going to do is just give you a, a quick talk um, and then he's also going to give us a, uh, a demo of the tool as well and so if you have any questions, please just note them down. Uh, we'll, we'll allow a few minutes at the end of the presentation so, um, so you can ask questions. Over to you, Yaka. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let me just uh, share my screen first. So, uh, yep, we've been uh, working together with, with uh, Paul and, and uh, in marketing with Trust uh, team for, for some time. And I'm really grateful for the for the chance of, of speaking to to you all in this this webinar so thank you very much everybody for joining uh, very good evening to you so it's uh, it's a morning time here in Helsinki um, so yes today I'll be talking about uh, the BigQuery and, and setting up a marketing data warehouse in in Google BigQuery uh, together with Supermetrics and and basically uh, to to go into the uh, marketing data warehouse topic we, we will be talking really about the, the data and, and connecting with data connecting with your your marketing data mainly uh, and and why do we want to be talking about that is is uh, you you may know what is going on or, or you have an, an idea what is going on but but you really need to understand why things are happening and, and to to get that understanding you you then then need to have uh, uh, proper access to your data and so we'll we'll be talking about a little bit of, of changes that are happening within the marketing data landscape uh, and are also then uh, about a, a data driven approach to your your business or or marketing what things are are driving that and, and what are the, the obstacles or, or challenges around that and, and really uh, looking at the challenges preventing you from taking control of of your data and and then then also uh, going towards the, the marketing data warehouse topic and, and uh, uh, discussing the, the benefits, what you, what you gain from having your marketing data in a marketing data warehouse. And, and then I'll, I'll show you simple steps, how to get started, how to, how to build that uh, marketing data warehouse. So to, to start with, uh, uh, so data, it, it is, we are seeing that, that actually data is one of the, the biggest untapped opportunities for for most or at least many uh, cmos so so marketing is not necessarily uh, that much of, of brand building which is it, it is of course still that but uh, uh, working around data and, and and operating with the data and understanding that is, is becoming more and more important and 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 uh, being able to utilize that is is becoming an important part of of, uh, of, of the work of, of the CMOs. So talking about that, it's, it's really that, that the, the forward thinking leaders, they, they are taking this, this kind of a data-driven approach or, or fostering a culture, data-driven culture in their organizations. And, and what do we need, what, what do we mean by, by data-driven is uh, really 
collecting the data, analyzing the data, and identifying insights and, and trends from those pieces of, of data. And, and based on those, those insights, then, then making informed decisions and actionable decisions rather than, than working on an instinct or, or gut feeling and, and, and making, making decisions that are based on, on some hard facts. And, and we are seeing also, also that, that this, uh, well, well, Gartner is, is working, of course, on the, on the like, they, they are market analysts and, and, and looking at different, different technologies and, and vendors. And they, they, are, they are also saying that, that, that from uh, investment point of view from the organizations, they are seeing that this is, this is a, a topic on the rise, that, that uh, organizations are, are putting more priority on, on data and, and different uh, uh, technologies around that. And, and yes, we, we see really a, a clear need to, to, to be better uh, with, with the data and, and coming out of difficult situations. Uh, now, now, this is one quote here on the left that you see that, that, uh, we, that the whole world went into a, a new situation, something that we, we were not expecting, something that we, we, we didn't necessarily know how, how to cope with the new situation. But we, we've seen that uh, those organizations that had a good uh, organization on, on their data and understanding what is happening around them in, in, a, in a more structured way, they, they have been coming out better out, out of this, this uh, difficult situation. So, so we really have a, a need for, for, for being agile in our marketing, uh, do, doing the, the, the planning across channels uh, in an agile way and, and being able to put accountability to different, different channels and, and, and reporting and analyzing across across uh, dif different uh, marketing uh, channels. So um, now really going into why uh, we, we should take this data-driven uh, approach in, in marketing. And, and the very short answer is that, that uh, as I said, companies that know how to utilize their data better, they outperform their competition. So that, that's, a, that's a short answer, why, why to be data-driven. And, and really digging then in, in a little bit deeper into into the benefits uh, when, when you know what is happening and when you, when you know why that is happening, when you clearly see the trends and, and, and have the insights, you're, you're better able to make uh, fast reactions to, to changes in your environment. Uh, to to uh, specifically look, look into what, what kind of actions you are able to do, you're, you're better in your targeting, you, you, are, you know what is the right audience to target? You, you know when is the right time to target the, the, that audience and, and what, what is the right message towards that, that audience. You, you have a better confidence on, on, on what you should be doing and, and what works, what, what doesn't work. And, and with that, you, you, you will be more effective in, in your upsells, uh, cross-sells, downsells. And, and uh, when, when you know what, what are the right things and you are, you're putting more effort on, on doing the right things, uh, then you can of course do less of those not non-right things and, and that, that can lower your marketing costs. Or if you keep your, your marketing investments on the same level, then, then that should uh, have, have really a positive influence on your return on, on marketing investment. So, so all in all, really you are able to gain competitive advantage uh, out, out of being data driven. Uh, and, and now, what, what do you need to, to be data driven? Of course, you need to have it, it's uh, it's very important that you have ability to collect the data and, and control your own data. So you have the access to, to critical data, uh, but then also access to additional data to, to have a better context for your your decision making. And, and that access has to be an easy access. You, you need to be able to get get the data easily, simply. Uh, automatically in the in the best case. Now, a lot of our customers are, are asking, like like we, we are not necessarily ready for that. We we don't know how to how to get the data, or, or we don't have the, the the technical capabilities. And and uh, and now now looking into the specific problems that they they have around <clears throat> the marketing data, then then one of the big worries or, or challenges is that. That there is uh, an increasing amount of, of data sources. The, the data is really scattered around. It, it's in different silos, and uh, the the number of different uh, platforms uh, uh, that the marketers are working is, is just increasing. 
uh, they, they may be dozens of, of different uh, uh, platforms and uh, a single organization is, is using and, and having the data scattered in, in those. And, and of course, within each platform, also the amount of data within, within a single platform is, is increasing uh, exponentially. So, so you, are, you are just uh, facing uh, a situation that, that there is so much data and, and, and it's scattered around that, that uh, you, you may be challenged on, on okay, what, what to do with that. And, and some, some of those native UIs or, or many of them are not really always designed for analysis or, or reporting. They, they are in, in many cases getting, getting better, but still you are seeing a lot of, lot of challenges like how much you can, you can tweak, your, tweak, uh, tweak your reports in, in those uh, source platforms. And, and, and uh, the historical data is not always stored in, in the platforms either for long periods of, of time. So you may, you may be losing uh, insights when, when the time goes by, if, if you just rely on, on those um, uh, source, source platforms. So th those, those are some challenges that we are, we are facing really, really on, the, on the data source level. And, and then going forward in uh, what, what, what are our challenges uh, with, within the data analytics. Now, the, the cross-channel analysis is really, really uh, becoming more, more difficult. There's uh, uh, possibilities for human error. It's, it's getting more cumbersome uh, when, when you have data in, in different formats, in, in different, uh, different platforms. If, if you try to bring it together, it, it may be hard to, to blend the data as, as it's, it's coming in, in different formats from, from different places. And, and also like how to, how to filter the right, right data to, to make those informed uh, decisions ba based on the, the, the insights that you, you should be uh, building and, and, and having ability to, to make the, the actionable uh, decisions on, on, on the data. So, so the question really is that, okay, how to, how to automate all, all this and how to, how to make it more easy to analyze the, the, the data to, to be able to, to build those, those insights. Now, you, you need to be able to take control of your data. You, you have to take the ownership and, and uh, own the data, control it. Uh, so, so that basically means that, that um, typically you, you need to extract the data from those, those sources to some third party uh, platform for further analysis, reporting, and, and, and building your, your dashboards. You, you may be good with, with, with some um, uh, data sources, with, with some data of, of just looking at, at one single source and, and building a dashboard out of it. But in, in many cases, you, you need to be able to do this, this kind of cross-channel cross uh, analysis. So, so how, to, how to really then, then take that, that data out of, out of there? Uh, so there, there are some, some alternative ways. This is the, the, the traditional way. You, you go into your source, you, you copy, and, and then you paste to, for example, your, your spreadsheet. Uh, and and that, that, of course, works well if, if, you, if you need to just get some, some pieces of data. Or you, you may maybe just then, then exporting and importing a bigger amount of, of data in, in CSV files. But with, with this, this kind of a more, more manual uh, approach, you, you, you soon get into the limits when, when uh, it, it becomes really labor intensive and, and, and there's a lot of places where you can make manual errors. And, and of course, there, there's a scalability issue that, that you, you can only do this kind of man, manual copy pasting or, or export import uh, so much. And, and then, then you, you need to be figuring out some, some other ways. And, and one way is that, okay, you, you, you write some scripts to, to get the data, uh, or you, you, you go into a project of, of building an integration yourself to, to integrate the data source into, into your destination platform where you want to be then, then uh, crunching the data more. But there, there as well, uh, the, if, if, if you are not uh, focusing on, on that kind of work, then, then that can be also quite uh, uh, laborious to, to do those, those uh, scripts for, or integrations. Uh, and uh, especially when you need to maintain those, those uh, 
custom integrations or, or scripts, then, then that may actually become expensive. So, so the, the scalability uh, benefit that you get from, from first just, uh, just making a script and, and automating something that you were doing manually, you, you may need to be doing that again when you realize that, ah, okay, I need this and that metric as well, or, uh, the, or, or, or some other, other changes are, are, are there in the, in the source API. The, the, the source APIs are, are changing constantly. There, there are new metrics added or, or old metrics are going or, or some, some other changes are, are there. And, and the, uh, some, sometimes the data that you get from the sources is not 100% ready to be used. So then you need to be doing something in between to, 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 to uh, work on the data to, to make, it, make it ready. So, so you, you still have uh, scalability challenges and and uh, and the and the costs may may be increasing when you when you try to do that that uh, by yourself. So then the fourth fourth approach would be to to use managed data pipelines, having having somebody else maintain those those integrations for you, and and then then just utilizing the the, the fact that the, the integrations are there, and and if there are any changes uh, in in the in the uh, APIs, then. The, the interface changes will, will not uh, prevent you from from keeping keeping uh, doing what you have been doing, and, and somebody else will will, will do the updates and, and maintenance. So those, those those that would be the the the, the recommended uh, way of working to automate really the the data flow, utilizing uh, managed pipelines. So that's that's uh, the the starting point of of uh, making the data your your. Making an, or taking an advantage out of, of your data and, and utilizing fully the data that is available. Then you, you want to be taking all the possible data into, into account. I, I mentioned that, okay, if you build a script, you may be overseeing some, some metrics at that point and, uh, and at the later stage, you, you might uh, want to add new, new metrics into your analysis and then then you would need to go go back into tweaking your your integration. So so that's that's important that you you have uh, all the data available for you, all the metrics and dimensions, not just some of it. Because in, in the future you may be uh, willing to do do another other angle in your your analysis, and and you want to be able to really automate this this data flow also across uh, different channels, and, and eliminating really the the challenges of, of human error from, from the process. Now, you, you see that it, it's obvious that you, you need to be making some choices in, in what kind of, of uh, architecture you have in place uh, to, to be able to, to, to use the data, utilize the data and harmonize the data across. Uh, so so that, that of course depends on if you, if, if you want to be doing some, some really ad hoc uh, reporting, then you may want to still keep the, the way of, of bringing the data into a spreadsheet for example but but what we are talking about today is is really really then then uh, uh, building a, a a marketing data warehouse to 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 use as as one core component of your your architecture and and that doesn't really really take away the fact that that uh, for the marketeers the, the the tools that they are using they they should be easy easy and and, and familiar tools not not something something very very technical or engineering. Uh, I would not go in, in more detail on the on the security topic, but but of course you, you need to take that into account. Like where where do you have your data stored? Uh, where where do you store your your login uh, information on, on those different data sources when you when you build this integration? Uh, so just highlighting that that as a topic to to take into account, but not 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 covering that in detail here. So this this is now. Uh, for, for larger amounts of data and, and larger uh, amount of, of, of data sources that you, you will be using, then the recommended way, way of action. So you, you have the data sources, you, you, you're using managed pipelines to, to access the data from those data sources and, and then bringing the data into, into one place to, to manage the data there, control the data there. Uh, and and that, that would be the the, the marketing data warehouse. Okay, there, there are some, some alternative technologies there, there mentioned, but today we are talking about uh, Google BigQuery, which is really good uh, platform for 
for storing your marketing data at. And then from there, you, you can do analytics within Google BigQuery. You can, you can, you can crunch the data there and, and then you can bring the data from Google BigQuery further to, to reporting and, and visualization on, on different, different platforms. And, and then really use, use the data and the insights to, to activate the data and, and, and then take the, the next step, steps in, in your, your operations. Now, just to, to make, make sure that we are all on the, on the same page, what, what do we need? What, what do we mean by, by a marketing data warehouse? So, so the marketing data warehouse is really one unified destination for storing and analyzing your marketing data. And, 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 and there are two, two, two main uh, characteristics uh, of, of uh, marketing data warehouses. Uh, first, first of all, they, they have a large uh, uh, capabilities or, or storage space capabilities. So, so you, can, you can store a lot of data. So you can store data across multiple sources. You can store uh, data across vast time periods. So you can, you can really have your, your historical data in, in one place. And, and you can have the data on a, on a high uh, granularity. Uh, the, the data storage is, is today not, not really an, an obstacle anymore. So if you are utilizing cloud-based data warehousing uh, solutions, then, then the, the, the storage is not, not the problem. Uh, the, there is a storage space uh, available and, and it's not uh, costly. And, and then in addition to the, to the storage uh, capabilities, uh, the, the marketing data warehouses are now good with, with large or, 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 or good computing power to, to analyze these large data sets. So, so two sides, uh, storage capabilities and, and computing power to, to handle those, those big uh, amounts of data. Now, what, what really are then the benefits summing up on, on, on the challenges we spoke and, and, the, and the requirements that we, we spoke about? Uh, to, to look into what, what are the benefits you get out of putting all that data into a marketing data warehouse. So, so first of all, of course, having uh, the data from different sources in one place, having a reliable place to, to have it, have it timely updating it in one place. So you can compare your, your paid campaigns across different networks or or you can you can then then link your advertising data with web analytics or or CRM data. So so really having one one place for all the data, one place to to store the historical data. So you, you don't need to uh, rely on on the on the on the policy of of how how long the how many months, for example, the data is stored in in your source. Uh, but but you know that if you need to go back into your historical data to to build more more models, uh, then then you have it in in an environment that that you control. So really having full ownership of your data, and 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 not uh, uh, relying on on other other platforms. You you control what data you have and 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 how long you want to be keeping that. So now, now going forward, what, once you have the data, then of course it is, it is about capabilities of analyzing the data in one place, using that computing power, and, and then being able to easily connect to, to different dashboards and, and reporting tools to, to get the, the insights out of the data. And, and then utilizing the data uh, or activating your data uh, based on, on, on different, different analyses. So those, those are the, the main benefits you, you get from, from building the, the, the marketing data warehouse. So I'll, I'll be walking you now through uh, simple steps, how to get started with, with uh, BigQuery and, and with, with Supermetrics. So, so uh, Paul already mentioned what, what are the things that Supermetrics is doing, but now today we are talking about the, the uh, connectors to, to BigQuery. Uh, and and I'll, I'll be demonstrating how you can set, it, set up the, the marketing data warehouse with the, without any code. You, you don't need to write any code. You, you don't need to do configuration. Uh, and, and of course, when you are using Google BigQuery, you don't need to worry about the maintenance of the, of the data warehouse part. 
So uh, these are the steps I'll be I'll be demonstrating very shortly. So just running them through here on on a slide and and then going forward in a uh, short demo. So these are the steps to to have it all up and running. First, you enroll the connectors. So we we have connectors for different data sources, and, and that's really a matter of two clicks to, to activate the connector in, in the Google Cloud Marketplace. Once you have the, the, the connector activated, enrolled, then, then you go to uh, the BigQuery user interface and, and do the, the transfer configuration directly there. Not a, a super technical task, but really a, a non-technical process to, to set up the transfer. And after that, you, you start having the data updated in your, your, your uh, tables in, in BigQuery. So though that's, that's the first three steps I'll, I'll be focusing on in the, in the demo. And, and then of course, after that, once you have the data in your marketing data warehouse, then you can report it in Google Data Studio or, or some other BI tool or, or visualization tool of your choice. And I'll, I'll show you an example of, of that as, as well. So uh, let me just uh, then go into a, a, a demo. And uh, okay, let me show you the cloud marketplace. So now, now we are here in, in Google's uh, cloud marketplace. And I, I've just uh, put here a, a search word for, for supermetrics. And, uh, and, and you see, you can, you can scroll the different connectors we have available. So if we now want to, want to start getting Facebook ads data into BigQuery, we select uh, that connector and we enroll it. And actually then, then we, we haven't yet selected which Google BigQuery project we are in. So, so I need to do that, that selection. So selecting the Supermetrics demo uh, project. And, and that's, that's what's uh, required to enroll. Now, now that connector is available for me. So I can jump directly here to start configuring the, the transfer, or I will then go here in, in the BigQuery user interface. And, and basically, hold on there. Let me see that this is, this is loading. So this is, this is now the, the, the BigQuery user interface and I, I selected the transfers. Uh, I, I see multiple transfers that I, I have up and running in, in this project. And to create a new transfer, I'll, I'll just click here, create transfer. And now once I have done that, that enrolling the connector, after that, I see in the data sources here in BigQuery, uh, that Facebook ads connector by Supermetrics available. So I select the data source as the connector. Now I need to give uh, uh, a display name for my transfer so that I, I can recognize what, what uh, transfer this is. And, and this is just free form text. Uh, then I'll, I'll select the options. I, I'll start it right away. And, and I select that, okay, I, I do it on a, on a daily basis. So, so having the data updated every day. And the next thing I need to be selecting, where do I take the data? In, in BigQuery project, you can have multiple data sets. And, and now I'll, I'll just uh, find the data set here from the list. I, I need to create the data set first. And, and I, I select my, my own demo data set. And, and this is when, when, you, when you do connect to different data sources, you do the same process of, of setting the transfer for each data source and, and select the same data set. Okay, I can, I can set the refresh window. I'll, I'll just do two days or worth of data on, on every day. So, so we, we refresh to two days worth when we do the daily transfer. And I can, I can set up that, okay, if, if there's something wrong, <clears throat> I, I, I get an email, email notification.
Hello, everyone. So we've just lost uh, Yucca temporarily. If you just give us a few minutes, I uh, here we go. Yucca is back with okay. us. Okay, I'm back. Now I'm not sure at which stage I I lost the connection. So we uh, we lost you for about probably about thirty seconds. Okay, so so was I was I already started with the configuring the the transfer? Yeah, go for go for that section. Okay, so uh, sorry about that. I don't know what what happened. I just realized that now now Zoom is is logging me back in. So hold on, I'll I'll share my screen and let me know if you see my screen again. Yeah, all good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so we were here in in creating the the transfer. So so I, I just just for the sake of of ensuring I I didn't you you didn't miss anything. So I, I selected the, the data source from the list. So this, this, uh, this is the connector I just enrolled. I, I gave uh, the transfer a config uh, or, or display name just to uh, identify that, that later on. That's a free text. And I decided that I, I want to do a transfer on a daily basis. And I selected then which data set I will be bringing the data into. So I can have multiple data sets in my BigQuery project and, and to, to utilize, really build the data warehouse, I am now building that in, into a single uh, data set. So I have my demo data set here. And, and I, I selected that every day when I, I do the daily transfer, I transfer two days worth of data. So I, I do a two day refresh from the every, every day past two days are, are refreshed into my data warehouse, just in case some, some data has been changed uh, there in the, in the data source. Uh, and, and then here I, I, can, I can set an email notification in, in case that, that um, something fails with the transfer. So I'll, I'll get an email, email on, on that. Or if I'm setting up a lot of different transfers then I can I can use also this this cloud pops up topic to to get uh, all the notification into into one place rather than than uh, getting getting possibly multiple messages to my my mailbox. So basically, that that is the the configuration I need to be doing in in the BigQuery user interface. Selecting the Supermetrics connector as the data source, and and then selecting the data set where I, I will be bringing the data and, and how often uh, I, I, I do the transfers on, on a daily basis or weekly basis, you can, you can choose that. And, and uh, so then the next step is that I'll just uh, click connect to source. I, I need to uh, click a couple of times here to accept. And, and then I'll be taken into uh, the, the login with, with the data source. Okay, let me see if, all right, something something now actually I was just testing earlier today, maybe maybe something with my uh, access to Facebook ads. So I'll, I'll not start debugging this, but basically what is what is needed here, I would be then uh, selecting my Facebook ads account or multiple accounts if, if I would have multiple ads ad accounts. So that's basically what what would be the the, the step here, I authorize to the data source of Facebook ads and, and I, I select the uh, authorize to the, to, to, with my credentials and, and select the ads account and, and then I click submit. And, and then luckily I have done this before so I can, I can show you what would be the, the next steps. So basically this would be two clicks here, uh, authorize and, and then select the, the account. And, and then I could go back to uh, the Google BigQuery user interface. And, and now going back to the, to the main, main view here. So this is, this is where we started. We clicked here transfers, but now we can go and look into, into the data. So we look at, the, this is my project, Supermetrics demo, and, and I have created this, this uh, data set for myself. You've got a demo data set. And, and so far for this data set, I have uh, configured the transfer of Facebook ads. And as you noticed, I didn't choose any 
specific metrics that I'll, I'll start bringing into. Rather, uh, how, how we work here with BigQuery, because the storage doesn't cost that much. So, so Supermetrics has, has built the uh, schemas ready. So, so we are bringing pretty much all the metrics and dimensions that are available from Facebook ads to put into these uh, six tables. So we have defined the schemas of, of these tables. Uh, so you can look at, at the, the table, the schema here, what, what are the different metrics. So that, that's the overview of the, of the schema. And, and then you can preview your data here on, on, uh, on, on this. So now this is what, is what is needed to set up the marketing data warehouse really. Now I, I run through the process of connecting to one uh, <clears throat> data source and, and I, can, I can see the data, data here in, in nicely in the tables. And, and that will now, after I set up the, the transfer, that will now be uh, taken or, or transferred on a daily daily basis. So I, I will update the, the or I, I get an automatic update on the data every day. And I can, I can also separately uh, schedule a backfill. If, if I start the transfers today, then if I want to get the, the historical data, I, I can schedule also a backfill operation or backfill transfer to get all the data that is available from the data source uh, uh, filled in. I'm, I'm not going into that, that example here, but just to demonstrate here, uh, I, I have the, the data nicely. Uh, and, and now, as I said, in, in my data set, uh, I have only, only Facebook ads data. And, and, uh, but what, what I could do is to, to bring uh, other, other data sources also also in the same data set. I'm, I'm showing just another other data set where we have Bing ads data. So, so Microsoft, uh, uh, Facebook ads, uh, Google analytics uh, and, and LinkedIn ads. So this, this is the way you would be setting up your, your marketing data warehouse then to, to do the same process for, for multiple uh, uh, data sources. And I promised to show you an example now, now that I have the data here nicely in the tables then uh, I'm, I'm not building uh, the dashboard here in the demo, but I'm, I'm just showing you uh, a template that we have. We, we have a template for all your paid channel, uh, channels uh, to, to uh, visualize the data. So, so here are the, uh, for, for this template, the, the data sources. And uh, to take this, this template into use, you, you would need to, in, in Data Studio, uh, take this and, and then, then uh, Take, take into use the, the Supermetrics connector from BigQuery to Data Studio and, and then in this template just, just uh, uh, link it to your own data set where, where all, the, all the data from these uh, data sources is, is present. So that, that's uh, then, then the next step that you would need to do if, if you would have a, a ready, ready uh, template available or then you can, you can build your own dashboards on, on data studio or you can use the data also in other other visualization tools but I'm, I'm not going into into that uh, example here so that that was the the demo part here uh, and uh, and and just just had the data studio dashboard template here on, on a slide in, in case but we, we looked at that that already and, and not going into into more detail with that. So uh, now that, that would be the, the simple steps to, to have all your marketing metrics in one place. So, so that's to demonstrate how, how easy and simple it is to, to do that uh, very shortly on, on Supermetrics. We've been there in the business for about 10 years now in, in total. We, we have half a million individual users uh, uh, ha that have, have used our, our solutions uh, over 14,000 corporate customers globally. So we have customers around the world. You have some, some logos here visible in, in this slide. And, and basically what we do, we, uh, in, in addition to uh, building marketing data warehouses for our customers, then we, we also help uh, the customers to, to uh, bring the data into, into different, different platforms, such as Google Sheets or, or Data Studio directly. 
but uh, that's that's uh, pretty much my my part of the presentation thank you very much for for joining here and, and apologies for me dropping off for for a moment awesome uh, that was really good Jack. a really good um introduction overview of the need um it'd be great now if we could get some some uh questions um so it looks like we've already got one that's come in here but just so everyone knows the way we ask questions is in the um in the chat channel so if you want to start adding any questions you you you've got i'll i'll start reading them out so the first one is how does bigquery handle difference uh, differences in how metrics are measured stroke reported between different marketing platforms so i'm guessing there you're talking about um kind of the 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 uh, from personal experience the difference between something like google ads um and facebook and the way it handles um um uh, the way it reports the, the the different metrics yeah i could i could comment some something quickly there like like using using now super metrics connectors so we we have built those uh, or provided those uh, denormalized schemas. So we, we have uh, what we call a friendly naming. So, so we, we are uh, uh, naming the fields a little bit, a little bit in, in a way that, that uh, you, can, you can then uh, more easily uh, do your cross-platform cross uh, analysis. So, so if, you, if you use the supermetrics connectors to get the data to, to BigQuery and, and then further to, to Data Studio, for example, then you have a friendly name in, in, in place and, and actually in data studio you, you can directly uh, refer to, to some fields across different uh, different data sources with uh, what would we call join keys like with an asterisk and and, uh, uh, and, and, and just refer to, to, to many many uh, data sources at the, at the same time so you can bring into, into for example the, the, the dashboard I was showing that then we can, we can bring uh, data into one one view in in the dashboard with with one one reference to to multiple data sources great thanks hopefully that answers your question michelle um the next one is um uh there's a question around your support for snowflake so obviously snowflake um was in your diagram um what coverage do you have on snowflake uh, yeah, good, good, good question there. Good, good cats on on the, on other logos. So, so currently, as of today, on 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 the cloud uh, marketing or cloud data warehouses, we we have the support for BigQuery. We are in in uh, some weeks bringing the support to Snowflake. Actually, it's it's not out yet. It, we 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 have it uh, like like uh, we, we we have it done, but but it's in in, uh, in internal testing phase still. So it, we we haven't launched that. So that, that will be coming in uh, in in uh, some weeks or a or, or few months. Awesome, thanks. So just a couple more questions. So the first one from Cedric is for native Google marketing platform with native connections to BigQuery like AdWords SA360. What is the additional benefit for using Supermetrics as the uh, as an additional connector? That's a good question. Yeah, that, that's that's a good question. So, so definitely, you 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 have the the native connectors. Uh, some, sometimes there is actually a difference on on what are all the metrics that that are brought uh, by by supermetrics. So, so we we take pride in in uh, when when we build the connector and and now with with uh, with the with the schemas that we include uh, all the possible metrics and dimensions. So that that's one one thing, uh, and and then. Also, when, when you are using supermetrics connectors for, for other data sources, like third-party data sources, then, then something I mentioned there, the, the friendly naming. So, so we make it easier to blend the data across different uh, data sources. And if, if you use uh, supermetrics for, for Facebook, uh, for example, and, and other like, like Bing ads or, or Microsoft, then, then uh, you using uh, supermetrics connector for, for Google ads would, would be easier for you uh, if, if you want to be then, then uh, uh, blending the data across channels. Great stuff. 
And then finally, this last question is, is it best practice to have all of the data sources pulled into the same project or how should it be best organized? So just uh, something around how you structure your um, the query uh, data there. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a, that's a good good uh, question there. Uh, so, so actually, not not even only to to one uh, project, <clears throat> but but within the I, I was now all the time within one BigQuery project, but then I was showing uh, multiple different data sets, and, and now uh, that that's the the recommended uh, uh, best practice to 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 bring all the all the data sources into one data set. Now, now if if you would be uh, and an agency then then you might want to build uh, separate uh, uh, data sets or or even separate uh, projects for your different customers but but now now as as a as a brand you 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 would uh, you would be recommended to to bring the data in, into one data set where you can then then do different actions so i i wasn't going to into into like detail what you can do there but but you can you can you can join the tables and and, and you can do uh, crunching of the data there within your data set so so you can have different views there as well but but yeah in short uh, re recommended to to keep it in one one data set excellent so we've got one more question i'm aware we're a bit sure. over the time so i'll ask this one question and then we will wrap it up so uh, michelle's asking can you play around with the different attribution models within bigquery uh, or is this handled through the reporting tool uh, yeah, I mean, in, in BigQuery, I'm, I'm not a, a super technical expert on, on BigQuery, but but you have a lot of capabilities to to play around with with the data in in BigQuery. Uh, so so you can do that there, or or then then of course you could you could do some 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 something on the reporting layer. But but uh, BigQuery gives you quite a lot of lot of good uh, capabilities for processing the data there there uh, within that platform. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, some good questions there. So thank you everyone for getting involved. Um, I think uh, it's, it's obvious as with that, that last bit of engagement that uh, it seems that everyone's got a lot of use out of this. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank Yucca for um, uh, taking the time out today uh, to present it to, to us all. Um, hopefully you've all found this useful. What we'll be doing um, after this is the same as usual. We will be, give us a couple of days and we will send out the slides. Yaka, are we okay to send your slides to people? Yes, yes, definitely. Great. So, so uh, you, you can look at them afterwards. So yeah, thank you very much from my side as well for everybody for joining, joining here. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good rest of your day or evening, depending where you are in the world, and uh, hopefully see you um, at the next event. All right. Bye, Thank everyone. you very much. Thanks.